Ah, this is Brooklyn, St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics, and this is Ask the Aquaponics Guy. Preventing you from becoming a biscuit-headed grower. Today, high-class growers, we're gonna be talking a little bit about non-uniform growth when we're dealing with growing our crops. But before we jump into that, I wanna thank you guys for liking the video and subscribing to the channel. I absolutely appreciate you guys, every one of you guys out there that view the channel, right? Live from Aquaponics Paradise. So let's jump right into it right now and see what we got going on. Now, this question here comes from my man. Where's your name at, man? I don't even see you on here. Kevin Saska. What's going on, Kevin? So Kevin's question goes as follows. It says, hey, Brooklyn, hopefully you can help me. I've been having issues with plant growth uniformity in my system. I've checked all the nutrient levels and they are all up to par. And my pH is at 6.8. But some plants are growing much larger than others in the same raft setup. All of the plants were seeded and transplanted on the same day. Any suggestions on what might be causing this non-uniformity? This is a hot question, Kevin. And this is one of those mind-boggling questions like, how in the world did I plant the seeds? And I'm assuming they probably came from the same batch. You're, they're taken out of the same seed packet, which means they came from the same seed lot, right? And you're planting them on the same day and they're growing in the same exact conditions, but yet they're displaying non-uniform growth. What in the world is happening? And this is something that Every one of you guys is going to experience at some time once you've been growing for a certain, uh, certain period of time. Now, there's a few things that could be causing this, but you've eliminated a good portion of them because you, you're, you're saying that your nutrients are all up to par, your pH looks fine, they're in the same raft system, they're pretty close by each other, so it can't be a light problem. Looks like they're under natural light conditions. What else could be going on? Well, one of the things that you could check for first that I would advise you to check for is look at the roots underneath and check for any root rot that could be occurring. That's just something that you check. I'm not thinking that it is that because I'm looking at how scattered these plants are and the rate of the smaller plants to the larger plants it doesn't appear that it would be something like root rot, but I still want you to check underneath the raft and, and, and look on, look at the quality of the root structure. But what is most likely occurring or has happened is it started way before you got to this process, way before the planting actually occurred. And this is known as what is called the seed vigor. We're dealing with the quality of the seeds that you're dealing with right seed vigor now when we're talking about seed vigor we're basically discussing the um, performance of that seed during the germination process and also during seedling growth and some of the things that go into determining how vigorous a seed is is the germination rate so when you plant it those seeds if you observed you know the germination rates how many of those seeds that you planted actually germinated, right? If you had a few seeds that germinated, maybe you planted 20 seeds and maybe only, you know, 10 or 15 of them germinated you, and you paid attention to that, that's letting you know that those seeds that you have are lower in vigor, right? They have low vigor. Also, the uniformity of the germination. So when you planted your seeds, if you paid attention, you will see that if any of those, um, or if those seeds actually germinated at the same time, or was it a sporadic germination? Did you get some seeds that germinated within three days? Some of them came five to seven days. Did you notice those type of patterns? If you did, that is an indication that those seeds are low in vigor. They're not quality at their current state. 
Also, another thing that goes into seed vigor is the ability of those seeds to germinate in less than ideal um, uh, conditions. So you have your lettuce seeds there. Let's say they germinate ideally in around you know 70 degrees uh, Fahrenheit. And it looks like you've been growing them right now. It's around the summertime. You sent this to me about a few weeks ago, so maybe the late spring. It could be hot in your area, so I'm assuming that it's gonna be a little bit hotter or warmer than 70 degrees. So if those seeds were having a problem germinating in a less than ideal um, weather condition, then that's gonna be an indication that those seeds are low in vigor, right? Those are low in vigor. So also how long you've had those seeds. After, you know, that also goes into the, the, um, the rating of how vigorous a seed is. If you've had them for some time, it's automatically gonna lower the vigor of those seeds. So when you plant them, they're gonna have problems germinating. And when they do germinate, if they're outside of the ideal temperature, that's gonna really show you how vigorous that uh, seed is, right? You're gonna see some seeds that are gonna germinate and then the seedling growth, it might make it into the seedling stage, but when you see that seedling emerge, you're gonna see a stunted seed. You're gonna see a seed that it looks weak, it's poor. I actually have some right now that are growing in here. I have some pak choy that I've been growing, right? I started growing, and these seeds are kinda old. I actually have some seeds in there that are, you know, five years old, right? And when you plant them, you can see this occur. You can see that the germination rates are definitely not up to par. Like if I'll grow some kale, which typically have good germinations from uh, germination rates from where I get them from, at least low 90s, mid 90s, and some of them even the high 90, 90% 90 um, uh, germination rate. Now, when I try to germinate them after, you know, four or five years, we're talking about 30%. You know, they've lost a lot of vigor after you've stored them for a certain amount of time. And especially if you've stored them um, in conditions that are less than ideal. So if you have them in really hot, um, uh, a really hot temperature and really high in humidity, then you're gonna see that they're gonna lose vigor even faster. So when I planted these pak choy seeds, these are a few years old. They're not five years old, but they're a few years old. And when, you, when I planted them, the germination rate was pretty decent. But when you see some of these seedlings start to emerge, now, since it's less than ideal, the temperature that I'm growing in them right now is, is hot, L low, um, low 90 degrees to mid 90 degrees right now. That's out of the range of what you would typically grow your pak choy, right? So it's showing right now the true vigor of some of these seedlings and they can't really keep up. So they're gonna show their, they're gonna show their hand. Some of them are wilted or not wilted, some of them are stunted. You can tell that they're weak and what this is an indicator of is that if you have a weak seedling the only thing that that can pretty much grow up to be is a weak plant, right? The initial, the foundation of that, of that seedling is, is, a, is gonna show you what that could potentially be. So if you have a strong seedling, that has the potential to be a strong crop. Now, if I let these crops continue to grow, even the stunted ones with the, um, the ones that are high in vigor, I'm gonna have the same situation that you have right now. Some crops are low, are growing, are, are growing um, slow, and some of them are taking off, right? We're talking about genetics here. That's what we're dealing with. Something that happens prior to, you know, getting into the raft. So your raft and your, your, um, your nutrients, they're not really gonna have anything to do with that. Those are pretty much there, the nutrients are there to help it reach its potential. But if the potential has already been compromised, then you can only get so far. No, it doesn't matter what nutrients you put in there. It's already compromised and it's already um, has its genetic potential exposed. So this is something that you have to keep in mind. Now, if you want to look more into seed vigor, there's uh, an article titled Seed Vigor and Crop Establishment by uh, W.E. Finch Savage and G.S. Bazell. And they go into it in depth on a surface level and to give you a, a, a clear kind of understanding on how seed vigor plays into uh, crop development, right? 
it plays a very important part. And this is something that is oftentimes overlooked. So it's not really something that's, you know, on your part that you can really do about this. What I suggest you do is you look for a seed company that has a reputable breeding program, right? Because this is something that is being bred into the new and, you know, adapted seeds, right? The vigor is increasing and they're really trying to breed for uniformity in crops. So when you look at some of the seeds, you'll look for something that is marketed or described as uniformity. You're going to see it on um, some of the crops. That's letting you know that those are bred to be high in vigor and to, uh, to, to maintain that uniformity, right? Those are, that, that's part of the genetic uh, breeding in that program. So you're going to want to look for crops that have that on there. Now, this is not going to totally eradicate the non-uniformity in your crops, but it will significantly reduce the amount of non-uniformity that you experience. So it, it definitely pays to invest in quality seeds. Very important. Very, very important. The, the, the higher the quality of seeds, the better you're going to have when it comes to you know, uniformity in germination and uh, your seedling development. Right? So keep that in mind. So also in that article, they do talk about that, on how that is something, um, the uh, breeding for high vigor, and uniformity in crops is something that is highly suggested for those that are developing seeds for agriculture use. It's going to be very important in the future, right? Because we're going to need seeds that are able to, like, like I said, germinate under less than ideal circumstances and be able to grow because we have changes in the weather, right? That are going to require seeds that are adapted to that type of environment. Also, we have an increase in population, so we can't be having low vigor, you know, seeds, seeds that are low in quality. If we're trying to feed a mass amount of people, we're going to need those seeds to be able to germinate and keep up, you know, and keep up because there's only so many spaces. Once you plant a seed there, you're wasting time. If it's growing up and it's showing like, like some of the ones that I showed you on here, that's taking up time and space. And they're only growing to be, you know, low stunted, low quality seeds. That's taking up time and space. And that's not something that we can afford, especially going into the, to the future where the population is going to be increasing. So look into that article if you want to look, look at more into uh, the seed vigor. And you'll get a, uh, you know, a wider range understanding on what goes into that and how that plays a part in what's going on and what you're experiencing in your system. You know, like I said, it's, it's not uncommon to see that happen, right? But you'll notice when you get your new batch of seeds, once you plant them out, you'll see that the germination rate is higher. You know, the plants are less stunted, less weak, but as it starts to go on, time progresses, you know, they begin to lose vigor, right? And you'll begin to notice that. So that is possibly the case. That's what's experience, what you're experiencing right now. And that's what I would pretty much put my, excuse me, put my bet on. Right. So hopefully that has helped you out, Kevin. Try to get you some better quality seeds and then try it out again. And I'm pretty sure that, that you're not going to experience that. Right. So hopefully this has helped you out and anyone else out there that is experiencing it because you're going to go through it. You're going to see it. Right. It's something that it just comes with the territory. So just be on the lookout for it and know how to um, deal with it. Right. So if any of you guys have more questions, be sure to leave it in the comment section below. And we'll feature this thing on Ask the Aquaponics Guide. I appreciate you guys once again for liking the video, subscribing to the channel. Phenomenal viewers out there. You guys are amazing. If you need more information, click on the link below. Get you a free starter guide, a free aquaponic guide course. Not a free aquaponic guide course. I mean a free aquaponics course. Eventually, you'll get to the aquaponics guide course. Go to Aquaponics Paradise if you want to get into the aquaponics guide course. That's featured in there. Get in there, learn the fundamentals of aquaponics, and get the growing, baby. Until next time, this is Brooklyn St. Michael with the School of Aquaponics reminding you to stop walking and get you a car. <laughs>